Hey guys, what's up? Jason Gaddis here with another episode of the Relationship School podcast. Psyched to connect with you and get a little time with you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your reviews. If you are returning, um, Enlightened Love said, thank you so much. I resonate so deeply with this podcast. You're so right on, Jason. Love the insights and practical tools you're giving. This is above and beyond and it works. Thanks again. Thank you, Enlightened Love, for the review. You can leave a review on iTunes if you're getting value here, just by scrolling down on Apple Podcasts with your thumb, clicking five stars, leaving a typed in review is even better. And uh, just thanks, guys. Um, your reviews from all over the world actually help us continue. Um, there was a time when I was like, I don't know if I'm going to keep doing this. And now I'm very clear I'm going to keep doing this for the indefinite future. Uh, I'm just such, it's just a privilege, right? To be able to talk to amazing people, incredible guests and help you. So many of you, when you see me out on the street in Boulder or come to an event, just thank me for the podcast. Uh, so you're welcome. Hell yeah. All right. Um, imagine just for a minute that you had a career that drew on your passion of making an impact on the world and helping other people and that you could challenge and support people and deeply connect with people and that you could um, really make a difference in the world and help me change culture here. Well, that you can do, and it's called relationship coaching. We are opening up our relationship coaching applications now. So you can go to relationshipschool.com forward slash RCT. If you have ever dreamed or thought about working for yourself, laptop, anywhere in the world, uh, and getting paid well, you can you should think about a, being a relationship coach, okay? Uh, check out that page, relationshipschool.com forward slash RCT if you want to apply. I interview everybody that comes into that program, so please come hang with me. All right, uh, next we have an awesome guest, Lloyd Fickett. Okay, this guy is uh, helped found the Collaborative Way. Uh, Lloyd Fickett and Associates began working with a group called Rodell in 1989, and they developed what is now called the Collaborative Way, which is pretty cool. You're going to learn about that here in this interview. Um, Lloyd lives in Boulder. My friend Krista introduced us. Thanks, Krista. And um, she's just done really cool work with Lloyd for many years on how to help people in business in particular collaborate better and make decisions better and be more effective teams. Um, so this guy has uh, worked, uh, he was a former chairman of the Board of Phoenix Youth at Risk Foundation. Um, he was the chairman of the Shanta Foundation, which brings sustainable health, education, and economic development to rural villages in Myanmar. Um, he's written a couple books, The Collaborative Way and leading the collaborative way, overcoming the seven most common pitfalls. Okay, he's just a gifted guy, and I think you're going to really like our conversation. We start out talking about kind of his journey and, and then a little bit about corporations and how teams can be better, and I got some laser coaching from him on how I can be a better CEO. And then we got into personal relationships and how to do it there, and we talked about his... Um, marriage and uh, just got very intimate. So I think you're gonna like this. Yeah, I just love connecting with people like this. So uh, enjoy. All right, welcome to the show, Lloyd Fickett. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Jason. Yeah, man, great to see you again and uh, glad to, that I get some time with you. So uh, Lloyd, tell, you know, I just read your bio, but I'm just curious, just how would you describe yourself these days? What are you up to? <laughs> Uh, well, that's always a challenging question. Lots of things. Yeah. Uh, well, one and part of what gets me here is, or that has us together is uh, I'm up to the uh, spreading the collaborative way as broadly and as deeply as I can. So that's one thing I'm up to. And uh, otherwise, I'm up to having a really great life. Awesome. And yeah. uh, you live in Boulder, Colorado. And are you? Give us your just a little bit of relational background, married, divorced, kids, no kids, that kind of thing. Sure. So I have um, four grandkids wow. and um, uh, the oldest of which is uh, just uh, finishing his first year in college. And uh, the youngest of which is uh, will be starting uh, high school next year. 
and uh, um, two sons, uh, Jason and Cody. Jason is the co-author of my books with me. And, um, uh, and then uh, I've been, I was married for uh, 39 years to just an absolutely extraordinary woman, uh, Lynn, Lynn Beth Fickett, and uh, who passed away this last September. Mm. It's September 28th. Wow. So, uh, yeah. So there's been a transition here in your life. Yes. To put it mildly. Yes. Yeah. yeah I'm uh, continuing the transition. Yes. Wow. Okay. Well, we might, um, get into that or your family. I just, sure. I, I'm intrigued. I already have a lot of questions. Um, you and your son, for example. Um, so before we do that though, uh, what is the collaborative way? The collaborative way is uh, a way of working and relating together. It's um, based on a small set of practices and uh, was developed out of a, uh, a need for an extraordinary way of working together. And so <clears throat> in being up against that pressure of needing to um, find that possibility, that way of working together, uh, fortunately, we had a breakthrough, and that breakthrough being that um, mostly, say, you're when you're looking to elevate an organization's way of uh, performance, um, then where you focus is on developing the people in the organization. And while we were making progress doing that, we saw that the suddenly saw that that would be one. It was going too slow for what we needed. And then two, we saw that if you really want to do that, then what you need to do is shift the focus to how we work together. Mm -hmm. So if we could work on really developing how we work together and elevate that, um, that's how we're going to get to extraordinary performance together. And cool. so that was the shift we made. And then we call that a small set of practices. That's what the next insight was. How do you do that? We'll call out a small set of practices that we take on and commit to in a context of learning, in a framework of learning where we're supporting each other and learning to work this way together, mm -hmm. focused on what we're up to together. So, you know, those, and then there's five core practices, listening generously, speaking straight, being for each other, honoring commitments and acknowledgement and appreciation. Yeah. So that's, that's the, at the heart of it. That's so cool. I particularly love the for us, um, being for us concept. I want to get into yes. that. How, now, how did you, let's rewind a minute uh, before I kind of grill into the model here. How did you get into this? I'm curious, like, like, let's go back way back to your childhood. Were you someone who was pretty relationally oriented? Were you more just kind of on your own trying to figure things out like an engineer or like what, I'm curious what your childhood was like and what sort of led to you becoming someone who's really interested in helping people collaborate? Well, <clears throat> I had a pretty, ch I had a challenging childhood. My, my mom left when I was three and a half years old, and that really was crushing blow in my life. Mm. And, uh, uh, and then my father was, um, you know, really rattled by World War II and was pretty fairly brutal at times. Uh, so I came out of uh, childhood being somewhat, um, suppressed and, and uh, not exactly fully expressed. Uh, there were, um, and there were positive things as well. Got a strong foundation and in integrity and, and, uh, a sense that I could actually somehow accomplish things. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, uh, and then for a long time, I didn't really see anything much worthy of applying myself to. And, uh, so I was, you know, I was, <laughs> I, want, I, I was a sandal maker and uh, had a, actually sold leather on Telegraph Avenue in wow. Berkeley, California at one point. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> and then I ran into uh, Warner Earhart and uh, uh, took the S training back oh in 1973 okay. wow. and finally saw something that I saw that was worth uh um, contributing, contributing to throwing myself into, and uh, ended up working there for about nine years, and until I was 
realized I wasn't actually fully aligned with uh, Werner and then began to go my own way. Uh huh. Uh, so, wow, that's so cool that you have that experience. I was watching uh, that documentary recently. Um, <clears throat> pretty intense guy. Uh, I'm curious. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, you know, the, the yelling and the screaming and the, you know, you're an asshole and all that. I'm curious, uh, what, what was, um, what was helpful about that, that had you go, God, there's something meaningful here. There's something that got, got you that was helped you wake up or whatever. Well, it was a real, um, one, it was, there were a lot of positive things there, a tremendous amount of positive things. Um, there were also some things that are really problematic. Um, however, one was there was the possibility there through inquiry to come to a direct experience of um, emptiness and to um, what I would say today is, uh, it's like if you go into deep meditation, um, you can come to, a, you come to a place, that place being here, mm -hmm. uh, where when all the chatter falls away, what falls away is all temporal meaning and everything just is. So that there was access to that experience through an inquiry method, um, in those early days. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was invaluable uh, foundation on which to build the rest of my life. Yeah, that's so cool. And then did the, would you say the collaborative way arose out of that or was that much later? It was later and it was, it was both contributed to by that experience, but from both sides, you know, um, there was a lack of, uh, in my book, from my perspective, a lack of, uh, commitment to um, relationship there and, and a lack of caring for each other at there. So, uh, and um, so it came out both the, from the process of then also standing up for my experience and saying no to certain things um, there. So that my no's were as important as the yeses to the, to the development of the collaborative way. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's neat. And fortunately, I had a um, early in my life had developed a, a commitment to authenticity that had emerged out of a, uh, uh, you could call it a mystical experience I had inside of the Christian tradition that mm -hmm. served me well through that whole experience because uh, that's been fundamental for me for my whole life. Yeah. Well, and, ever since that point in my life, which was pretty young. Yeah, that's cool. And authenticity, how would you describe that? Like, what, what do you mean by that? Uh, that's where you are, uh, you, you are, your actions are aligned with your, with your um, values, with what you're saying, with how you're pre presenting yourself in the world. And that if you are, teaching something, for example, then you are practicing and living what you're teaching. Yeah. Uh, and if you're not, then you're not being authentic. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Is authenticity part of the collaborative way? I mean, I think you said being real or being honest or what was the, uh, it's going to show up in, in every aspect, even though we don't use that term very right. much, uh, but say to, um, to speak straight, Speech really rate. requires yeah. a high level of authenticity. Um, honoring commitments does. Um, and when you really understand it, so does listening generously, acknowledgement, appreciation. So all of all the practices. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 cool. Um, when I think of teams, it sounds like you have, would you say the, the collaborative way is mostly a corporate model to build and work with teams and to be more effective? I would, uh, not really. You know, what is the case is that's where Lloyd Ficken Associates is focused with the collaborative way. Okay. Oh, it's, it's a really great way to be able to spread and make an influence uh, pretty broadly. So you can move into an organization and engage, um, you know, where, depending upon the size from 25 to several thousand mm -hmm. people. Okay. And then, but the, 
the, one of the cool things about the collaborative way is it doesn't stop inside the company. Then people take that practice to their homes, to their communities. So anywhere you have partnerships, so that could be in a marriage, that could be in um, a, a committed friendship, it could be um, other kinds of ventures that mm -hmm. aren't a corporate venture. So where there's a committed partnership where you're up to something, there's something you're up to together that's where you could practice the collaborative way. Yeah. And did your, I'm going to assume your, some of your juice for the collaborative way came out of your marriage. Uh, we, my wife and I definitely practiced the collaborative way together. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's so cool. What, what, um, let's talk about teams. I want to just talk about teams for a minute and then I want to talk about kind of the interpersonal, just like a marriage relationship. Sure. Within teams, what, what would you say are the most, um, common problems that surface that would have the collaborative way be useful for? Well, anything you want to accomplish together. You know, one of the, one of the first difficulties you see is that we don't do a very good job of listening to each other. So if you want to accomplish something together and you're not listening well to each other, you've just made everything a lot harder. Mm -hmm. So imagine we just elevated our ability to listen a little bit. It's going to make a huge difference. And imagine if we really elevated that significantly and were able to truly support each other in our practice of listening generously, what would be possible then? Where we're listening for the value in each other's speaking. That's yeah. setting aside our filters, our prejudice, our history, and listening for the gold, the value, in what the other person is saying, that's, that's going to make a huge difference. Yeah, totally. When people think of collaboration, I'm going to guess some of the listeners might think of like a democracy or, okay, we all have to have an equal voice, but a lot of businesses are hierarchies. Um, they're not holacracies, for example. So how do you, how does, um, how do we collaborate in a hier hierarchy sort of when things are top down? Well, you can collaborate in an environment. You can practice a collaborative way in an environment where there's a hierarchy of accountability and a hierarchy of decision making. Um, it's pretty hard. It, it can be done, but it's pretty hard to have an effective organization without one. Yeah. So, um, but then it means that I'm going to have to do all those things. And there's two guiding principles to the collaborative way that I didn't mention, and those are uh, inclusion and alignment. And then it all arises out of the practice arises out of an ethic of responsibility. So meaning that as you, the practice is an expression of responsibility. And as you practice, you keep waking up to where you're not being responsible. Uh -huh. So cool. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yep. So, um, um, so, I can be the decision maker and we can be working together in a very highly collaborative environment uh, where that would require that I listen to what you have to say, that I speak straight to you, you speak straight to me, we're for each other, we're all committed to what we're up to, we honor our commitments together, and we're acknowledging and appreciating each other. And, um, and then, you know, the quality of the calls will be much better that I'll make as a result of that. And we can all learn together. Um, and it actually gets to be very challenging. Uh, most people th often think they want to be in a, what often is called a consensus where we all have the Ex final say. Exactly, right. Uh, I don't like that term. I use the term alignment, okay. making a decision by alignment. Because it's consensus. There is no consensus on what consensus means. Yeah. So, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I use alignment and then we have it mean a certain thing, you know, the, and part uh -huh. of it is that we each have final say, but we also have to, you know, to do, to work that way, you have to have a high level of uh, maturity. Yeah. So one is you have to have the maturity to recognize that about many things, equally intelligent, equally committed, um, uh, equally informed people will not agree on what we should do. Yeah. So if we're going to have to come to agreement, we're paralyzed. And, and that is absolutely the wrong thing to do. Right. Slows us down. Yeah. Impedes so, growth. Yeah. So then we'll have to find a way to come to make a de decision without, um, 
oops, I lost your video there. There you go. Uh, we'll have to make a decision without coming to agreement. And that what we see is we have to find a way we can all move to, together that is going to forward what we're up to. So you have to be definitely committed to something you're up to to work effectively in that environment of making uh, choice, decisions through alignment. So it's a very difficult. And now you're totally responsible for whatever this decision. You can't say the group made it. You have to be, I made it. Uh-huh. It's, it's really not uh, like it, people um, romanticize what it's like to be in that kind of decision making. It is tough. Yeah. Are you saying, let's say I have 10 people on my team and we use this method and we all get to alignment, as you say. Are you saying everybody has that view that they're personally responsible for making that decision? Yeah. So that they can't I walk blame out, me. That's mine. They blame, blame me as the CEO. I, like, hey, Jason made this decision. Right. It's on him. I, I've given that up if we're making this in this way. Ooh, I like and this. I have to speak straight and, I've, and it requires of me to say if I'm there or if I'm not. And if I'm not aligned, then I need, then it's, we all got to listen, work, th- well, okay, what's your concern? What do we have to work through? You know, it's a, it's a daunting, highly mature process. Yeah, because so. then I, I mean, it really forces my hand if I'm a blamer, right? Or someone who's like, right. well, hey, I didn't, I wasn't a part of this decision. It's sort of like, no, you were and you chose <laughs> this decision. Yeah, and then to stay in it that way, you're going to keep wanting to say, well, no, it's just going to be Jason's way anyway. So I'll find a way to excuse myself out of having the really hard conversations that need to be had as we're facing the fact that we're not aligned here. Maybe, maybe so you could, it, yeah. Sorry. That's a, that's serious yeah, it's not recommended as a starting place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you said, there needs to be some maturity online. Yeah, and let's get good at our practice of the collaborative way before we step into trying to do that. Yeah, so that great. we can really be strong in listening to each other. We're strong in speaking straight with each other. We're strong at practicing being for each other as a practice, not as an assessment, but as a practice. Yeah. We're good at honoring our commitments and. And, and we can, we're skillful at acknowledging and appreciating each other and authentic. Yeah. So. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Quick interruption uh, to talk about our coaching program. Uh, if you're a helper, if you've ever thought of living a life of service and you want to really get good at relationships while helping other people work through their relationship challenges, uh, it's time to consider being a relationship coach, right? Um, We have a nine-month training. It's awesome. And people graduate with a a certification as a level one relationship coach. And our program this year is filling up, and we'd love to hear from you. So all you have to do is apply. You go to relationshipschool.com forward slash RCT. And here's what uh, Nikki had to say. Considering the course, but you're feeling hesitant, um, specifically around... The financial commitment, um, I hear you. I, I'm 25 years old, and so the, the financial commitment felt really strong for me. And um, there's payment plans, of course, which is how I was able to actually do this course. So it can be broken down into manageable size bites. But uh, what I would say is the, the cost of not taking this course would be, would be everything. I mean, I would pay what I paid for this course 10 times over, literally, to receive the education I got. Boom. Okay. Uh, Nikki's obviously talking about the investment. Uh, yeah, it's not small. And if you think about the investment you make to get a life skill that you can forever get paid for, uh, to me, our coaches continue to tell us that was worth way beyond what I paid for it. So hopefully you can come check us out, guys. Relationshipschool.com forward slash RCT if you want to apply to become a relationship coach. All right, back to the podcast. All right. Uh, so maybe you can give me some feedback. So let's, let's do some, like a real example here. So I'm obviously the boss of my company, right? Right. Uh, hierarchy model and a great team, awesome team. And I, I sometimes suck at collaboration, believe it or not, I'm totally relational guy. Right. But in my desire to accomplish a goal and hurry up and get somewhere, I'm like, come on. Like, I don't want to slow down to sort of get in alignment sometimes. And so I'll make or I'll, I'll behave in a way that it feels like I'm just making the decision and people don't get an input, 
even though maybe sometimes there is input and et cetera. So how would you, how would you coach me as the CEO to uh, improve here? Well, there'd be a couple places we'd want to work on together. So one would be, let's get, be straight about how the decisions are being made. So yeah. there's not, because when you're not straight and you don't call it out, people assume we're all making it together uh -huh. and that we're all the decision yeah. makers. So then you can allow people to participate, but because you're not clear, they feel jerked around by it. And it seems like you're not being real with them. Whereas you said, I have this decision to make and I want to get your input before I make this decision. Now, when they engage, they feel like they're contributing. Mm -hmm. If you're really listening, okay, and allowing them... A key part, there's uh, two things about listening generously. One, it means that you have to lead with curiosity and intent to learn, backed up by a willingness to be influenced. Okay? Oh, I like that. Willingness well, to be influenced. Yeah, that's yeah. key Because if I don't, sometimes we'll, do, we'll le do all the first part, but so as to validate my already existing point of view. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and that doesn't feel so good yeah. to the other part, other people. Okay, yeah. and they sniff it out eventually. You right. know, so it's like so it has it needs that willingness to be influenced, and it doesn't mean I'm going to change my mind about what I'm doing. But it, and if I listen in that way, I will be influenced. At least I'll be much more informed about what needs to happen to bring this uh, path into uh, fruition. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's one. And then, then appreciating that skillful inclusion at the beginning of, of, of going down a pathway, even if it slows me up a little bit, will speed us up later. going down later. Yeah. So I want to get the, I mean, I, this was the inclusion was the hardest one of these for, was my weak spot when I started practicing. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it got in there, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so because uh, so many of us, I, I, you know, just once you learn that a big part of being a manager is to make decisions, mm -hmm. then you get kind of hooked on them and you just love to make decisions and let's just make it quick. Right. Uh, so, but whoa, it's more than make them. We want to also implement them. Mm -hmm. And we also would like them to be wise, intelligent decisions. So whose input do I need to get so that I can get the information that would be useful for making this decision? you know, people closer to the, where the action is usually, mm -hmm. as well as who would it be helpful for their voice to be heard before the decision is made. So it'll be easier for them to align and get behind the decision, even if it's not theirs, once it's implemented. Now, does inclusion involve this sort of personal responsibility thing that you're, you're suggesting earlier in every decision? No. You Just, if you include everybody and everything, you go slow. Right. Yep. So this is on, so, you, you, there's well, a decision tree or something, and it's like the most important or the most, you know, the biggest well, movers. It needs to serve what we're up to. Uh -huh. The way I include needs to serve what we're up to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then um, anything else that you would give me feedback on in terms of a leader uh, around that issue? Well, then practice the collaborative way well. Um, because that'll help guide you, you know, because it's going to be that if, if, if I'm listening generously and my team is listening generously and we're speaking straight to each other, we'll work and we have a, and we're for each other. We're going to work out these misunderstandings. The inclusion is a very difficult thing to get good at. So I, it's both an art and a team sport. So if I don't feel included, then how, what can I, I can either be a victim of that or I can take some, I can speak up and make a request about being included and we can explore that and learn together mm -hmm. not from a place of you're wrong but help me understand why you didn't include me in this before you made this decision yeah and i like the distinction there of if i could be a victim to that um, how do you address that if that's occurring well then um, that's just going to be some more speaking straight and being for each other and inside of being for is a, one of the key skills is doing a cleanup, getting a good at cleaning up misunderstandings, places where we step on each other's toes, yeah. that kind of thing. So that's essential that we get that well established in how we're relating with each other, where, whether it's in an organization or a personal relationship. Cool. Let's talk about that for a minute, your marriage 
and uh, my marriage and people's you know intimate relationships. Um, the for us principle um, specifically sticks out to me as I just love that uh, that it's sort of like I'm taking a stand and it's not just for me. It, this is for us, right? I, am I getting that right? That that's kind of the basic yes, it, premise. Well, here? Uh, it's it's going to be in that relationship. It's going to be for if I'm being for each other, I'm going to be for my wife. Um, I, I'm going to be for me and I'm going to be for us. And most likely what we're up to is something to do with us. So what are we actually up to together? Mm -hmm. What are we committed to? That was a, that was a, a foundational thing for my wife and I is that uh, as we were approaching getting married, a colleague of mine said to me, uh, Lloyd, just make sure you know what you're committing to. Are you committing to hold on to each other or are you committing to the quality of your relationship? Mm. And boy, that question really rattled me. And Lynn and I took that question on and actually slowed down our, our wedding plans as a result of that. And uh, when we came out of that inquiry together, we were clear what we were up to is building an extraordinary marriage, an extraordinary relationship with each other, and that we would not compromise on that journey. Damn. And, uh, so that helped us to always true up uh, as when we got into trouble. Yeah, yeah, because you have the commitment to fall back on, and hey, this is what we said we were committed to. Yes, and not only said, but this is what we are committed to. Yeah, we li we're living it, right? Yeah, we're living it. Yeah, that's powerful because so many couples, uh, we, we teach coaches how to work with couples, especially yeah. under stress and conflict. And it's amazing how many couples don't have this in place. Right. You know, they, they actually don't know what they stand for. They don't know what they're really doing. They might have this view, like you said, your friend said to you, like they're holding on to each other because, gosh, I just don't want to be alone versus, no, we're here to create something magical together. Or they think that's what it means, you know, yeah. you're supposed to, you know, till death do his part uh, and grip tight. <laughs> right. But what's the other possibility, you know? So, uh, and, and, and the thing is, you know, you make that kind of a commitment and it is one of the uh, most powerful journeys of self-development and enlightenment, a waking up enlightenment that's available. Yeah, I'm with you. I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. What's a big takeaway, a key lesson, maybe if you could share one from your marriage of 39 years uh, that stands out as like a you know, guiding lesson or principle? Or Well, um, I think that uh, in some ways it's what we're talking about right now. And it's an, one important thing is that a lot of people will not speak straight in their, in their um, relationships. Yeah. Totally. We define speaking straight as honest and in a way that is forwarding, that contributes to what we're up to. So by speaking straight in the way we're talking about, it has a lot more responsibility in it than just, you know, what I say, turning the cesspool of your mind on loudspeaker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not speaking straight. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so if you make this commitment, you're going to come, there'll be times that you're going to come to the edge together where you don't know whether or not you're going to make it in your relationship. And you're afraid that if you say, speak up about something that is occurring inside of you or that needs to be brought to the table, that you could lose the relationship. Yeah, wait, are, are you, are we talking about you right now? Like, do you have a yes. personal example yeah, of this? Well, can, that's, can you bring uh, us there? Can you take us there if you're willing to that moment? Or one of them? Yeah, I'm just looking for a second here. Um, there were two such moments uh, in, a, in the full blownness of it. There were many small examples through our life, but... Uh, you know, one year we were sitting in the, with a circle of friends on New Year's Eve and we're sharing with each other and celebrating the previous year and beginning to create the next year together. And as we're sitting there, I realized I couldn't authentically celebrate my relationship with Lynn. And, uh, um, you know, and that was really painful. Mm -hmm. And so... I talked to her afterwards and I said, hey, I said, Lynn, you know, I shared with her 
that that was the case and that I wasn't willing to step out of the next year without being able to do that. And so that started a really challenging journey in our life um, that uh, looked like it was moving towards us breaking up. And uh, in fact, we had rented this uh, little condo up in Strawberry, Arizona. At that time, we lived in Phoenix and we're driving up there. On the way up, we started um, deciding who gets what, you know, of our, wow. uh, yeah. And, uh, and when we got there and we're being together for a while uh, and talking some more, my wife at a, Lynn at a certain point said, I just will not have this. This will not be. And her stand just rattled us in a way that opened the doors and we, whatever had us jammed, we started talking about, we worked through and boy, at the end of that year, I was in full celebration of our relationship. Wow. And it was just absolutely fantastic. Um, That's so, so cool. Got goosebumps here. You, if you don't risk it, so this is the piece of advice. If you don't risk your relationship, you never give it a chance to show up. Yeah. And you won't know what you got. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. So that and, we did. Yeah, that's powerful. Were you... Um, before New Year's Eve that time, that year, were you, was it a year of kind of like struggling for you in your own head? Were you just kind of scared to bring it up or you, uh, was it I so subtle I, or like what, what was happening? I think it was towards the other. I just had gone kind of asleep mm -hmm. and it slowly occurred. And I had obviously been not speaking up, um, just didn't realize that I hadn't been. Yeah. And uh, so it, it it incrementally got to that point. Yeah. And uh, so. Why were you and why do you think others are so afraid to speak up sometimes in our closest relationships? Well, I think, again, it's that fear there. Well, there's a whole bunch of things. One is the fear of loss. Yeah. OK. If I speak up, I'll, I'll lose this. This is over. Right. Yeah. Then also the fact that it's often we have such a hard time listening to each other. So we don't have a, hist a good history of listening. So, and so that's, um, uh, and, it, and we haven't cleaned up those situations when they've occurred. Mm -hmm. So now we've built stories and filters up that, that uh, support us in, um, and validate us not speaking straight. Yeah. And then when we, but instead of speaking straight, we'll, we'll lash out, but that's not speaking straight. Right. Slashing out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And conflict, as you know, is part of the journey, right? Like imagine you and Lynn got competent at conflict because it's just part of the journey. Will you say more about uh, that sort of just as a part of a long-term relationship? Well, you know, there's, there's, it's an interesting thing with conflict because um, we'll have differences. We don't have to, we might be getting into some challenging conversations, but I don't think we really have to go into conflict that much, really. Um, now, we will until we learn how to be more effective in our communication with each other. Um, but um, Lynn and I didn't have very much conflict, uh, um, especially uh, as we moved along in our relationship. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we usually there's, um, you know, one of the breakthrough places in our relationship was when we resolved our power struggle that was in our relationship. And, uh, um, it was, it was really um, showed up in a lot of ways, but it showed fundamentally it was a, uh, a struggle around intimacy. Mm -hmm. So I'd come home from a trip and I'm all like, hi, and want to, you know, really strongly connect. And, and she's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's just, let's, let's, uh, 
let's let's get a little connected here. What do you mean? That's what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> and so she would feel like attacked and uh, and other things that would come, and I'd feel um, uh, um, rejected. Yeah. And uh, and I'd go into all my patterns, which that that was my whole thing. My mom leaving me when yeah. I was three and a half and losing being the one yeah. and, uh, uh, um, and, uh, and then Lynn had her set that fit perfectly with that. And it wasn't until we became till and we couldn't see it. It was just running and it was the source of so much of the conflict in our life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, once we woke up to that and then could see what each other's pattern there was and then become, and then it's, not make each other wrong for our patterns, but become each other's partner so that we partnered in our intimate connection and we're really for each other. So this level of partnership emerged and that was, uh, then, then it was, that's what all we needed to bring to these moments of conflict uh, were really was just a failure to be in partnership. Mm -hmm. And once we could step into partnership, we can work through these things. Um, you can work, it's amazing what you can work through. Oh yeah. Yeah. From partnerships. So, um, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, um inclu including like meeting, meeting, uh, like Lynn died of ovarian cancer. And so hmm. we faced that together for five and a half years and, uh, wow. talk about opportunities for, conflict, there's plenty of them there, you know, say she wants to do a treatment and I don't feel, and I'm questioning that, you know. Yeah. Uh, now, I w was wise enough to recognize who's the, who's the decision maker there, whose call that is, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. then work through the process of being able to get behind her call. Yeah. So. And how's this transition been for you to have her pass and you're now widowed and I'm just so curious what that's like, what that's been like for you. Well, you know, Lynn and I, when after she had the diagnosis and, and uh, we realized it was stage four ovarian cancer. And then after surgery and the first round of chemo, it didn't go into remission. And the doctors, the oncologist said, you know, I've never known of anyone to live more than three years from this point. And uh, we made a commitment that um, no matter how much time we had, what we were going to do is we were going to spend it loving each other and enjoying our time together. And that we refused to spend our time in suffering. Mm. So, wow. um, so that didn't mean we never suffered. It meant we were would recognize when we were and, and embrace that suffering in a, it's always going to be patterns that will lead to that suffering, reactive patterns, and then care for those gently and release them so that I can be, so we could be together generating in a generative way, because that's the only way you can feel on that commitment. Mm -hmm. It's got to be you have to generate your love. Okay. And your care for that mm -hmm. person and the energy that you're bringing to them. So, um, so to live through that, that way, and including we were graced with having, um, the last 45 minutes of her life together, where we knew this was the last time we were going to be consciously together wow. and we're able to celebrate our life together and celebrate our love together and be there in, um, in really celebration to her last breath. Uh, when she wasn't giving me a, a challenge that was, I mean, she had us laughing in that period of time. Mm. Uh, so uh, uh, to stay present that way for each other in the ultimate time of showing up, um, that has really helped, you know, on this side of that passing. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll never be the same from that experience. Right. Now, I miss her tremendously. Um, I had the benefit of the, in those five and a half years, I was already mourning. So I come to have a, a good experience with sadness because I had already lost the life used to have. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was, I would be hit by these waves of sadness and I still am, um, was this morning. Mm-hmm. Um, and so mm-hmm. it's mainly, I open myself to those experiences and, but also don't go into the drama and all the meaning what's underneath that sadness is our love for each other. Yeah. So, um, so I appreciate that and uh, appreciate our relationship. And she was really clear with me. Listen, I'm what I expect to have what I want for you. I want you to have a wonderful life. I want you to have a great life and uh, I don't want you to take a long time doing it. So, (laughs) Be clear. <laughs> Beautiful. So I'm doing, I'm doing that and uh, I'm having a wonderful life. And, uh, and whew, it hits me really hard at times. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I loved what you said there. Thanks for sharing all this. So, so candidly, um, I love what you said about, you know, I just opened myself to the experience, right. Of, of feeling right. whatever's going on. I think yeah. that's a really good lesson for our listeners here, whatever yeah. they're going through. And yet we don't, you're not drowning in it, right? No, you're it's right. Like, not pushing it away and not drowning in it and not going into all the melodrama. Yep. Just staying right there and feeling into it. And, and uh, you know, sadness itself, as you get to know sadness, is actually a beautiful emotion. Yeah. So it's not something to be running from. Mm-hmm. It's something to feel. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, cool, Lloyd. As we as we yeah. wind down, I'm just again just honored to um, get to connect with you in this way. It's super. Ah, awesome. so delight today. Yeah. Yeah. Delight, likewise. Yeah, and um, people are going to probably want to hear about your book and maybe your website or where to find you. So, what's what's probably the best place for folks to check you out? The first place would be collaborativeway.com. Pretty easy, collaborativeway.com. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the best place right now to get our books. There's two of them. Um, uh, that's where they're least expensive is off of our web- website. Um, and then it'll explain, it has a lot of support material about the collaborative way. Um, and we're also in the process of uh, developing a virtual product that will uh, um, allow people like uh, a way because we've had this request for so long. How can I bring this into my family or how can I bring it into a business that can't doesn't feel like it can afford our services. So we're developing this product and um, if people want to know about that product and when it comes out, they can, they can leave a note at learn.collaborativeway.com. Okay. And that's how, and then we'll let them know when, when it actually is available. Great. And we'll put that in the show notes for all the listeners so they okay. can just come to the page here. Great. Awesome. And are you blogging or podcasting or doing anything talking about your journey? Because I'm just aware of how, I don't know, I'm just loving listening to you talk about your life and your wife's passing and just how you roll. I'm, is that going, are you writing anywhere? Or? Not currently. I, I have been asked to write a book about um, our journey together. Uh, Lynn's and mine. And, you know, I, I think I'll do that eventually. And, uh, um, um, and, uh, and then beyond that, I don't know, uh, right now there isn't other than my journaling. I don't, yeah. that I, for myself, um, uh, there's nowhere that I'm doing, doing anything like that. Cool. So. Well, just to, just my own encouragement when it's, feels right. I, I think it would serve. Like I'm, I'm just really served by, by listening. So imagine. Thank, the listeners you, are too. thank you, Jason. I really appreciate that. Yeah. You got it, man. Yeah. Okay, cool. Collaborative way.com. <laughs> yes. All right. Lloyd Fickett. Thanks so much, man. Hey, Jason. Absolute pleasure. Cool. Appreciate it. Okay. Powerful, man. Uh, I loved hearing this guy's story. Uh, so intimate, right. About his wife passing and just how he's relating to that. Uh, yeah, my heart goes out to you and your family, Lloyd. Action step is to follow up with Lloyd here on the collaborativeway.com. It's collaborativeway.com with no the, um, collaborativeway.com. And check him out. Uh, he's got a couple books. And um, again, my friend Krista has trained with him and just seems really awesome. 
I worked with him for a long time. So thanks, Krista, again for the intro. Another action step uh, that you can do right now is with a friend, okay, if you're single, if you're in a partnership, is what he calls the up to. What are we up to together? Another way of saying that is what's our purpose, what's our mission, what are we committed to together? There's a subtle point that he um, spoke about there. Uh, I feel like I could have talked to him for an hour just about that. So what are you up to together with this person in your life? Again, a friend, um, family member, an intimate partner. Can you get a shared reality about what he calls what you're up to? He calls it the up to. It's like your focus together. And uh, I like that. Um, again, you could just say what we're committed to. So just have a dialogue about that and report out. Leave a comment. Send us an email. Uh, I'd love to know, how did that go? Could you get on the same page? A lot of couples, for example, don't want to have this conversation because they get derailed really fast into differences. A business partnership has to fight through this conversation or they are not aligned where they're going. And then there's problems in the business and then it probably tanks because there's no shared direction. So have the up to conversation. All right, that's your action step. Okay, guys, and again, if you want to become a relationship coach, want to help make this world a better place, want to live a life of service and meaning, please check us out at relationshipschool.com forward slash RCT. It stands for Relationship Coach Training. All right, we are taking applications. Uh, I'd love to see you, meet you uh, on an interview. So got to interview everybody that comes into the program. So come join us, please. Let's do it, right? Uh, let's, uh, let's change this world together. Hey, thanks so much for listening. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Share one of these videos with a friend. We want to help the planet get their act together around relationships. And you are one of them. So thank you. Thank you.